earlier. Our own Dan Bongino, alongside our friend Pastor Daryl Scott, spoke on Capitol Hill during a hearing on police practices. Let's take a look. The law-abiding members of society would be directly threatened by the absence of police or the inability of police to respond to criminal activities and in many cases would endeavor to take the law into their own hands to ensure the, their safety and well-being. Removing these heroes from your communities and my community will do nothing but ensure chaos and destruction. Police officers are the front lines putting themselves between the evildoers among us and the honest, hardworking Americans, just yearning for some security and prosperity in a small slice of Americana. All right, joining us now for reaction, we do have Pastor Daryl Scott, Fox News contributor Dan Bongino, Congressman, Republican, great state of Florida. Matt Gates is with us. He was in that committee. Let me start with you, Dan Bongino. You talked about, uh, and I watched, the passion, the heroes. Did we forget? While everybody was racing down the stairwells on 9-11-01, the cops, the firemen, the first responders, EMT, they were racing up to save lives. And a lot of them knew darn well the odds weren't good for them coming home that night and even left messages to loved ones. Um, did we forget yeah. the 99 percent, Dan Bongino? Looks like it. N not the people on this panel, Sean. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people watching haven't either. Sadly, many have. You know, Sean, uh, no offense to the people in the media business. You know, I love you and uh, Matt and Daryl, but the finest men and women I've ever met in my life were in law enforcement, ever. And the fact that they've By been the way, so casually... Don't apologize. Yeah. I agree with you because so many yeah, I of know my you family do. I know and you friends, do. And, and I that's, agree with you. And that's why I knew you wouldn't take offense to it. These are the finest men and women I've ever met. I mean, did we forget that again, and that, that truck seven, ESU truck seven that lost so many members on 9-11, you know, Sean, they turned out of the precinct I used to work in in the seven five. You know how often I think to myself when I was a young rookie police officer, how many of those guys I walked by, I was a rookie, they probably didn't say much to me because they were next door, that I casually walked by in the parking lot of the seven five that are dead? that aren't around anymore. I think about that all the time. And we so casually moved on. And, and Sean, that was, it's not to distract at all from the purpose of the hearing today. Listen, police reform, sitting down with the unions and focusing on getting rid of bad apples we, we, out there, you and I as that's a great Sean, idea. You and I agree. Stop the chokehold unless your life is in imminent danger. We do martial arts. That's all we talk about when we're together. Uh, it, it's right, too, but, but, yeah, but throwing them overboard, in Sean, all the... Yeah, throwing them overboard, the cops, uh, it was just, I, I felt some of the Democrats, not all, really, really did a disservice yesterday by, by turning to attack the cops. It, it really was unnecessary. We had Look a moment of bipartisan Biden. unity with this. All right, let me go to Pastor Scott. Pastor, you know, uh, I'm looking at Seattle tonight. You have now talk of armed volunteers of Antifa to guard their cop-free zone and taking over precincts. You know, for 32 years, there was a show on television that I like called Cops. There's a show on the weekend called Live PD with Dan Abrams. You know what I like about those shows? We have cameras on, which I think every cop needs a body cam. Every cruiser needs a camera. Let's keep everybody honest. Let's protect citizens. Let's protect the police that do a good, honest job every day in protecting and serving. We learn a lot about how hard these jobs are for these shows. I like those shows. I think we learn about the, what they have to deal with every day and the good people that do respond properly and how do you respond properly. It's all on videotape. That, that, frankly, that will help keep uh, the, uh, the abusive elements out of policing. You're absolutely right. And what we're seeing today, um, as you demonstrated earlier, with these this latest round of riots is that people are going to take the law into their own hands when it comes to time to defend themselves simply because of this stand down order that uh, some of these Democratic politicians are issuing against the police. Listen, I'm glad our president is a law and order president and every law abiding citizen of this country stands behind him in stating that, you know, we do have to tinker. You know, the thing about, about police is this, and there are bad apples, even as uh, my brother Dan Bongino said, you don't, if you put a bad apple in a barrel of good apples, the good apples don't turn the bad apple good, but that one bad apple can turn the good apples bad. So we want to get out the bad apples, uh, you know, in a concerted effort to eliminate the bad apples. But we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as I said earlier today in Congress. The police yeah. force's job is to protect and serve, and we rely on them to do that on a regular basis. 
Matt, and so I, we're not going to allow the Democratic Party to turn us against police for political purposes. You know, uh, Matt, I'm, I'm watching this today, and I'm watching you in particular, and I'm watching the, the interactions here, and I'm thinking, you know, look at what's happening in Seattle and around the country. You know, canceling cops and live PD, I think we need more cameras. Cameras showed us mm -hmm. the truth. Our eyes didn't lie to us with, with, uh, with Mr. Floyd, for example. Sure, defund the police, abolish ICE, disarm Americans, and then surrender our cities to the Antifa mob. If this is the rule book for the new woke-topia, count me out. Uh, I think that today the reporting <laughs> that you've just indicated shows that, like, Antifa has now designated Seattle their capital, and it's going to be bad for the citizens there. What we need to do is focus on supporting the good police, isolating and removing the bad police. And I'm hopeful, Sean, that we could actually work across party lines on this. This shouldn't be a partisan issue. We should work on it together. And I and thanks to the great work that Dan did representing police and that Pastor Scott did representing his community and so many around the country, I actually think we took hey, a very Matt, productive step today. Not only do you have Antifa looking for armed you know, guards, they've taken over entire city blocks and an entire police precinct. L.A. Teachers Union, they want, uh, are calling for 400 member school police units to be disbanded. They're protecting our kids that at school, Matt. We went the opposite direction when we saw school shootings in Florida. We worked with Republicans and Democrats to increase the number of school resource officers because we thought if a young person could have positive interactions with police, maybe they coach their basketball team, help them get a Band-Aid when they skin their knee, that that will actually build the type of community p policing and the Here's strong another trust question. that could keep law enforcement and our students safe. God forbid you hear the school shooting is at your son or daughter's school. Would you like to know the cops are there or not there? I vote there. I vote I'd want them there because th they can help and they will. In most cases, they will, they will save lives. Thank you all.